Thank you. Uh, welcome over here at Crowdsourcing Week uh, in, uh, in Copenhagen uh, from Chaotix. Uh, can you please explain uh, what, what is Chaotix? Chaotix uh, is a crowdsourcing company. Uh, and what we do is we work with our customers to provision access to their crowd, uh, give them the technology or the platform to do that. Um, and then we also work side by side with our customers to drive marketing innovation programs um, with those participants that are on the platform. Okay, and you also just gave a talk over here at Crowdsourcing Week. Uh, you gave many really great examples. What's your own favorite example? Um, I think my favorite example would be the social innovation side. So how private and public organizations are coming together to create social change. So how can we make an impact on you know, food and clean water and saving lives at birth? Um, I would say that that's probably um, the thing that's um, most appealing to our team mm -hmm. um, is that we can make a difference. That being said, you know, we could kind of contrast that with our work with LEGO, um, which is awesome, fun, inspiring. Um, you know, they challenge us, we challenge them. Mm -hmm. um, so they would probably be my, my other pick. Yeah, your, 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 most, uh, your most favorite. And you're working with lots of big brands, as I saw the slides, with, 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 with LEGO, with uh, about 20, 30, 30, lots of big brands. Mm -hmm. um, and what way do you, uh, uh, what is your, your magic formula for big brands implementing crowdsourcing in their organization? Um, well, I would say that there's probably a series of characteristics that you have to be aware of. Um, so, number one, there has to be sponsorship at a high level to take on crowdsourcing. If you don't have that sponsorship, um, you know, don't do it because there won't be any action on what comes out of the crowdsourcing. Yep. So, um, so I would say sponsorship's one. I would say a commitment to action. So if you're going to go out and ask the crowd for help, or if you're going to ask them for insights, um, or you're going to say, I need some ideas, make a commitment that you're actually going to implement, um, or make a commitment that you're going to communicate why you are not going to implement. Um, so I would just say a high level uh, you know, degree of both communication and transparency across the process. Okay. Yep. And uh, we also talked about okay, uh, what kind of branches really could uh, uh, profit from crowdsourcing, and there was also a, a question about the governments. Uh, and what way do you think, we can, because I think crowdsourcing is really interesting for governments for, to, to, to uh, to really uh, uh, get the local people involved in what they're doing. Uh, and what way do you think, it, are, there, are there already good, good examples? Mm, I, would, I would say the good examples are still yet to come. Uh, but again, you know, I think with government, I think we could start small and then we could go big. So, um, you know, if there was a project in my neighborhood that I could choose to support or I could choose to provide feedback on so that, you know, the neighborhood would be more appreciative of that solution or that idea, um, that's where I think, you know, cities and governments could go. How, how could we go, you know, to the local neighborhoods and communities that we live in? Um, and then from there, how could we grow into, you know, changing policy? Um, or you know, making change, you know, substantive changes at the government at the highest government level. So think, start small, then go big. Yeah, but that that, that means two really important ingredients: uh, transparency and vision and long term. Yeah. So that's uh, and yeah, I think that, uh, that that's also a challenge in the current political system: that long term vision, uh, how, how to keep it, uh, also with the crowdfunding, uh, sorry, crowdsourcing. Yeah. And um, you're working with, lot, uh, with lots of big brands, but what you all see is uh, that the crowd is creating their own brands. Uh, what can a brand uh, uh, lose when they don't tap into the crowdsourcing? Uh? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think, you know, when you see a Lego example, you see a brand that, you know, learned through the Mindstorms example that they can't control it, right? So I think, um, you know, those organizations that want participation in their brand, um, they are the ones that should harness crowdsourcing. Those organizations that don't want to do that, don't do it. But I would also say what we've seen across our work for the past five years is it's not specific verticals that are moving ahead. Um, you could go across all verticals and go, there's, you know, early adopters emerging in all verticals, whether it's government, nonprofit, big brands, Fortune 500, you know, FTSE 100. Um, it's kind of the early adopters across those verticals that are going, I want to make this leap. I want to take this chance. Yeah. Um, so, again, I, I think that's the opportunity is it, it's, it's broad. It's across all industries. 
Yeah, when you look at, uh, at the Lego, they are also a customer of yours. Uh, now they have uh, the, the also the added value to their to the, to their audience, to the customers, is they provide the customers with real Lego bricks. But in let's say five, maybe ten years, everybody can make their own Lego bricks. Mm -hmm. And what way do you think those kind of companies, uh, where uh, when the production goes to the crowds, yeah. uh, can add value for the crowds? Well, I think again, you know, when Charles did his presentation this morning, and he talked about, you know, they're not just getting the idea, but they're getting the insight into the idea. So, would I buy it? How much would I pay for it? Do I think others would buy it? And so, again, I think if you can use that crowd not just for the idea, but for the insight around the idea and how best to implement it in the market, then I think you are going to achieve, you know, a better level of success. And I think they are, they are, you know, again. A, kind of a shining example of that. Um, I also shared the example of Muji this morning. Um, you know, their crowd-powered products are, are their best performing products. So again, the opportunity is there, but you're gonna have to put yourself out there um, and be willing to listen to what the crowd has to offer. Um, but, you know, the reason why Chaotix exists is how do you take the chaos of the crowd and how do you organize it in such a way that you can make action of it? Because um, you don't want to just open it up and go, I can't keep up or I can't make sense of it. Yeah, so in the end, so the companies, they really have to get in a facilitating role yeah. and empower their, their, their customers exactly. uh, to survive long-term. So they have to direct term. that energy somehow. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the, the challenges, in, uh, internal challenges uh, tools uh, from Lego was also that the people were saying, okay, but we're now outsourcing Task to the crowd. So, what has it has to mean for my job? Um, is it something that you see uh, in, in more examples? You know, I don't. I, I I thought it was interesting that Trolls had that up on the slide. Um, you know, I again when I look at you know the Lego Group, you know, so many designers live inside of that business and that company. Um, and I think you know Lego. You know, one of Lego's opportunities is how do I use that crowd to source new talent for my organization, whether I hire them or whether I just access them when I need to. Um, so I would say, you know, the opportunity for people um, to work at Lego, for people at Lego um, to attract new talent to the organization, it's it's only increasing. Um, when you look at the team that we work with, Lego that team didn't exist before. So new jobs are being created around you know, this movement and, and what we're doing. So just a shift in jobs. It, yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or additional jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And when you look at the, um, because uh, last three months we did lots of interviews in the financial services with Crowd Tradition. We also talked so, to some new uh, cooperative banks, uh, cooperative insurance companies, cooperative pension funds. Uh, do you also use lots of, of, of lessons, uh, but also techniques from the cooperative model into the crowdsourcing system that you uh, help your customers with? Yeah, so I mean, I would say, I think, you know, as we talked about this morning, um, you know, financial services is kind of ripe for disruption. We're seeing that with crowdfunding, um, whether it's, you know, equity-based, whether it's cash-based, whether it's loans, whether it's microloans. Um, so that industry is being disrupted from the outside coming in. I think the opportunity for the, most, the more stoic or traditional financial services organizations is for them to go, how can we innovate from the inside out? Um, so let's not wait for it to come at us. How can we reinvigorate our cultures? How can we inspire our people? Um, and how can we be better corporate citizens globally? Um, yeah. So I think you know, financial services is, is right for crowdsourcing. Yeah. And last question, because now crowdsourcing is really rising. Um, is there also a danger that, uh, because when you want to have the crowd involved and where there are more crowdsourcing questions uh, f uh, f uh, f for the consumers, at what way do you get, keep the, the, uh, the, the consumer or the customer involved with your crowdsourcing campaign when the amount of crowdsourcing initiatives will grow in the next five or ten years? Yeah, um, I would say that you know uh, a crowdsourcing participant such as me or such as you, um, we are going to build affinity um, or we are going to find affinity with organizations um, that have you know, the same cause as us. So I want to affect something socially um, from a positive perspective. I am going to build affinity around that. Or I love a brand. I'm going to build affinity around that. So I think 
um, you know, people are going to be offered multiple choices about what to get involved in. Yep. But I think it's going to be, you know, how do I buy my product today? There is some affinity there. I think, you know, people will choose on the crowdsourcing side to do just that. Um, there are some brands um, that don't do it that I have a strong affinity for, and I'm mm. like, you know, when you do it, I will be, I will be a fan. I will be contributing to your business. So I think, be selective. Um, but I would also say, you know, do both, you know, the kind of the, the more commercial route for the brands that you love, but pick a cause that's really meaningful to you, to your community, to your neighborhood, to your family, um, and get involved. Yeah, great insight. Thank you very yeah. much.